actually in the there we go thank you somebody um likewise in the notes if there's anything that you don't want to be uh stored for posterity put the little shush um emoji next to it and that will be stripped out before it is archived the Turing way has a code of conduct do have a look at that if you haven't read through it previously and if there is anything that um, you think is outside of that code of conduct or if there is anything that makes you feel uncomfortable and you're not sure about do get in touch with the folks listed in the pad okay um, we've enabled closed captioning for this call so uh, click the cc at the bottom of your zoom screen or ping and is it okay to say ping you a message if folks need some help with that and it's doing a thumbs up fantastic Okay, um, so this call is a bit of an experiment. It's a community forum, which is still a fairly new type of event for the Turing Way. And the goal here is to open up the, what were previously slightly private internal discussions about the development of the project so that everybody is welcome. And I do see a lot of familiar faces today, but um, for those of you who are new to the project and new to me, I'm Danny Garside. Um, I have been involved in the project for a few years now. I have been the infrastructure an infrastructure co-lead for a little while, and Jim will explain uh, a little bit more about what that means shortly. And as of a couple of weeks ago, I'm currently the chair of the infrastructure working group. Um, I'm a neuroscientist and meta-scientist, meta -scientist, and I split my time between researching color vision and trying to make academia more accessible, more efficient, and happier. Um, this, These are the links for the code of conduct, which are also in the pad. The Turing Way is an open science project and community-driven handbook on data science and research practices. And the idea is that we try and make it as easy as possible to do really good science that is inclusive and ethical. Um, we have the start page here, which is a great place if you haven't interacted with the project at all. It can be a little overwhelming to dive straight into it. And that start page is hopefully a slightly gentler um, on-ramp. Gives you links to the various events that we're organizing and kind of meta guides on how to go about reading the guides. The project, as of the last couple of years, um, we've increasingly seen these, um, these groups develop within the project, which are focused on specific parts of development. We have the translation team, the book dash team, training and outreach, accessibility, environmental data science, infrastructure, practitioners hub, and oh wait, Zoom is hiding that one at the top. And a couple of others which are incredibly important, but I can't see them because of Zoom. Okay. Um, we have these groups and the, the goal here is to bring people together so that they can work efficiently and push the project forwards. But the challenge that we need to bear in mind here is that we don't make these groups impenetrable to new people. And so part of the goal of the event today is to share what's happening in each of these groups and invite people to come on board. Okay. And with that, I think I'm gonna hand over to our first speaker, Jim from the infrastructure group, unless there's anything that I have missed. Uh, Anne and Milvika, is there anything that I missed on the intros? I'm seeing some shaking heads. Fantastic. Okay. In that case, I'll hand over to Jim. Now, Jim, would you like me to share the slides or would you like to share them as well? I could remember one thing, Danny. Okay. Um, this is a new one. This is why you didn't probably have. Um, we want to test something today uh, because we will be doing a lot of breakout rooms. Uh, we want to give you an option to indicate to, if you would like to go to the verbal breakout room or you want to stay in the main room and have a written interaction. 
Uh, one of the ways we do it in open life science is that you edit your name by adding W in front of your name to indicate that you want to be interacting with us today in a written form or S to indicate that you want to interact with us in spoken form. And I would do that. So if you could see your Zoom square, um, edit your name by clicking on rename and I'm going to add mine as spoken. Uh, and that updates my name. That would allow us to make better breakout rooms. Sorry, Danny should have said that to you earlier. Thank you so much, Malvika. We'll edit mine as now as well. And maybe just on that, so today's format is going to be a little bit different to what we've done in the past, rather than just having um, uh, feedback after feedback. We're going to have a little presentation and then a little breakout room, a little presentation and then a little breakout room. And the idea of these breakout rooms is to enable people to have little small scale conversations with each other, talking about what they've just seen and working out what clarifying questions they would need to ask to understand what is happening in that working group. Okay, Jim, are you ready to go? Yes, I'm ready. Um, if I could share my screen, uh, that might be nice. I can control the slides if I might show a page to you. Um, okay, has that worked? Yep, yes, beautiful, go ahead. Laptop. Right. Um, Yes, so uh, a few updates on the infrastructure working group. The past few meetings, we've been having a lot of conversation about how are we actually going to structure ourselves, how are we going to work, and, and that's still ongoing. But I think we made some really nice progress. And like Danny said earlier, Danny is now our chair. He's our, our first chair uh, for the working group. And Sarah has, uh, we're all very grateful, volunteered to be the secretary, um, because I think that's a role that everyone felt they would be quite bad at. Um, so we really appreciate that. The The plan with the chair and possibly also the secretary is that we're going to rotate these. And our initial guess is every six months, we're going to rotate in a new chair. And our thinking behind that was to make sure that people get an opportunity to be a chair if they want. We see it as a, a way to connect to um, that sort of higher level of the governance, uh, get some experience representing your group. Um, but also there is a time commitment to it. So that there's, there's a balance of giving people who want to have a go the opportunity to do that, uh, balancing that with not being a burden or imposition on anyone. So, uh, I think Sarah puts it best where she says that's this isn't a, a role for life, that if you're accepting the chair for a bit, it doesn't mean we're always going to expect you to be able to, to do things for us and then put a lot of uh, burden or expectation on you. Um, and also, I suppose the third thing we're trying to balance there is a sort of sense of continuity, because we did, I think, consider saying, well, maybe all sort of four of the core members as we were could be chairs and we could just sort of take turns, but actually that might be quite disruptive to other people where they're not really quite sure who they should be talking to, or um, we uh, might all have little bits of different information where, where really you sort of want one person who's holding all of the information for, uh, for a period of time. So that's what we decided. We've been interested in hearing what other groups decided or, or if they think that's a, that's a good idea. The main thing we've been working on practically is uh, the new domain and migrating everything sharing way to the new domain. So uh, I think we're, we're very happy uh, that uh, domain has been purchased. So we can now use the sharingway.org and subdomains of, of that domain to host all the stuff we want to. Uh, this is working now. So the book is currently at uh, book.thejuringway.org. 
there are a few others. Um, and the Turingway.org itself will should redirect you to the start page. So, and I, I think we've communicated this, but it's sort of worth restating that the reason we're doing this is these addresses should work forever. If we move the book from being hosted in one place to another, if we um, or, or whatever changes we make in sort of the technology in the back end, the book will always be at book.thechairingway.org. Um, and that's very helpful for um, sort of posterity of links. Uh, if, you, if you link to a page, it should reliably always always be there and we shouldn't have to worry about, about link prompt. Um, there is in the community handbook, um, a page under the infrastructure section called DNS, where I've tried to write, hopefully in a fairly accessible way, although it is very technical, uh, sort of how DNS works. So, so how we get this, I think the interesting and useful bit is towards the bottom though, where we explain what DNS records exist. And so what domains point to what, um, so how book way points to the book. The other nice thing we have is we're able to make um, redirects. So for example, news.thecheeringway.org should take you to the newsletter. Um, so these are the ones that are sort of set up at the moment. Uh, Slack.thecheeringway.org should redirect you to the uh, Slack workspace invite link. So hopefully again, this is sort of an extension of what I was saying earlier that those should always work. You can always find the newsletter at news.thechainway.org, whether it's button down or, or whatever newsletter provider we use. And that did recently change. So that would be sort of a nice example of uh, with this in place, you don't have to send messages out to people and say, this has moved now, it's in, it's in a different place at all. You should always be able to find it this way. Um, so that's sort of an opportunity to get involved if if there are things you have which would be useful to have a redirect link to to have this sort of canonical unchanging name um then definitely talk to us and we can see if we can we can sort that out um and i'd also just want to encourage everyone to start using the the new domain and, and if you share links with people use use these sort of new canonical addresses um, uh the yes um another thing which this enables so as i was saying um these urls will stay the same even if we change where the book or anything else is hosted uh we're in the process of planning to move the hosting from netlify to something else um there's a few reasons um sort of general not quite getting along with Netlify and how it works. Uh, in particular, the thing which irritates me is Netlify is stuck with quite an old version of Python, which is preventing us from doing some sort of sensible package upgrades. Um, this work is ongoing. We haven't decided exactly what to do yet. Um, it feels like we're leaning towards read the docs, so that's sort of not set in stone. and. I think part of that consideration is something we want to be a bit careful about and maybe do some outreach about or, or ask for some input and feedback is what are the truly essential things that we need um, from hosting? What are the things that are just nice to have and what are the things that are, that are actually optional or, or not important? And I think the things that we've considered, which are probably um, the sort of features which we definitely absolutely need are automatic generation of previews in pull requests. So that means if you make a change to the book in your pull request, you should get a link saying, here's what the book will look like if we apply your change, which you, which you can look at and browse. And that's really nice because it means we don't have to ask people to build things locally just to see what, what their changes are. Um, and the second is proper multilingual support. So being able to deploy the book in multiple languages uh, so I think those things 
so that things we can't really compromise on. So we need to solve that one way or another, whether it's something the hosting provider gives us for free or whether it's we have to do some extra engineering uh, to get those features. Um, yes, and uh, yeah, so thanks for listening to the updates from the infrastructure working group. I don't know if we want to do questions now or if we're sort of moving that to, to breakout rooms, but. Thanks, Jim. We'll hold questions for now, unless there's anything really quick that somebody can't keep in whatsoever. Um, we'll jump into breakout groups. And uh, if uh, and if I can ask people to write their notes and, uh, notes, comments and questions in the comments and questions section at the bottom of the pad, then we'll come back to those at the Q&A, which is later on in the session. Um, the goal there is to give folks a little bit of time to think about what their questions will be. And I'm hoping that somebody is fiddling around making breakout groups as I talk. Okay, Anne is looking happy. This is good. And I'll be as a hand up. Go ahead. So as we send people in the breakout room, Jim, I have captured a question that you posed. Would that be ideal for the people to discuss? So the question that we are asking are in the chat, when migrating away from Netlify or backend hosting, what are some essential features are we looking for? Uh, what are important for community independent of the hosting platform? And folks who are not, very much interested in the technology part of it itself, they can mostly focus on the feature that they would like. Is there anything you would like uh, as well, folks, to discuss in the breakout? Oh, the subdomains was another question you had in the slide, Jim. Yeah, that, that could be a nice one. So for example, just to like seed some ideas, we might want a cheering way blog or, you know, something like that. Um, oh, okay. Well, and the breakout rooms are ready. We'll send folks into that and just to um, set the tone, this is to try and work out what clarifying questions you would need to ask Jim later on to understand what Jim was just saying and yeah answer those questions that um that Malvika and Sarah have just prompted you with I'll be ready to go ahead one minute just doing finishing up the last bits for anyone that's been in a call with me, you know that at this point I would put on some music as I finish up the rest of the breakout room. All right, so we have, I'm opening up the rooms here. There are three rooms. Um, for spoken folks, there are two groups of three, one group of two. Um, we have four folks that are interested in written, engaging in the written form. And we can either, if you'd like, um, I created two extra rooms in case you'd like to go into a pair, into a separate space, but I haven't assigned you to any of those rooms. So we can decide um, if you'd like to stay here or if you'd like to go into a breakout room. Let me open those now. All right, so for written folks, great. And for, if you have a written preference, um, you can hang out with us here. Um, and if you have a strong preference to go into a breakout room, we can definitely send you there and we have the rooms open, um, but we'll keep you here if you'd like. We creep slightly behind, so I propose we do five minutes in the breakout rooms rather than the original 10. That sounds great. Great, and Danny, I just saw you got that. 
So I'm going to set. Are we pause recording? Pausing recording now. There you go. Fantastic. Uh, next up, we have Malvika talking to us about proposal from communications working group. Um, Thank you, well, Danny. Um, so I want to actually continue on the icebreaker question a little bit and uh, let you think about two questions that you can respond to in the chat. What do you understand by open communication? What does it mean to you? And how do you think community get involved in community level decision making through open communication? It's a little bit of nudge um, about where different kinds of decisions are being made. So what kind of decisions do you see on a day-to-day -day in community level where open communication could be helpful? Keep thinking about this question and we'll come back to this again. Just to give you a reminder, in the last meeting, we introduced that we're currently trying to model this three-level uh, governance. We have constitution level where Kirsty and I are the leads and we have chairs of the different working groups. So you heard from uh, Jim today, we have Danny, who's the chair who would be representing infrastructure group in the constitution level. But we have a lot of working group who work at the maintainers level. We have translation, localization, accessibility, book dash as well. Actual, a lot of work around the books and around the community building happens uh, at the community level. And we often don't talk about the governance that happens within the community and how people make decisions. We definitely explored some of the questions around what authority people have at different level, what the authority community has, what kind of authorities are there in writing book chapters versus creating a new Slack channel. So there are different kinds of conversation uh, that we think the transparency is quite important, which is why this question of what does openness mean to you in community level? So having introduced that, what I'm trying to do is exploring this idea for if the community members might be interested in uh, creating a communications working group. Some of the points that we were thinking about is how can we make some of our decision-making at different levels more open for people? How can we clarify some questions around uh, decision-making at the community level? How can we gather feedback more frequently and also suggestions for improvement? Because often, um, if we go back to this model, there are lots of conversation that happens in this level and we're very close to each other and hence hear each other out more quickly. Whereas sometimes new community members or community members who are not involved in maintenance level may not have a lot of places to tell us places or ideas that could be improved for them. And we're hoping that with some community-led commu communications working group, we can try to bridge that gap. Um, however, this is just a proposal uh, from us to you. Uh, we want to hear from you what you think this might mean. There's another thing that we want to do as well is uh, where uh, Anne has drafted a working group model which I have iterated through and now Christy is iterating through. And we want to test that as well. Does this working group documentation actually work if we try to establish a working group? But for you, this is the most important one. So my ask for you would be, can we think about, um, can we hear you out in this particular idea? And this is quite an open question I have created or dumped some of my own thoughts into this issue that you can find. I'll put that in the chat. This would be something that I hope you can spend next five minutes talking to each other on. So we'll open the same breakout room. You'll go back and change a little bit of the question. The slide decks are also connected. So if you want to revisit this. Um, but yeah, that's my very quick pitch. So I can save you enough time to go back and think about what this could mean for you. Let me add that in the chat. Someone might have already done that. Occurring. All right, and are we ready? Hey, we are ready. All right. 
Great. If you have changed from a spoken to a written, feel free to stay here. You might accidentally be pulled over to another room, whatever is your preference. Um, or if you've switched from a written to a spoken, um, feel free to join a room as well, or let me know in the chat. All right. Thanks, folks. So we have a whole bunch of notes and questions in the HackMD. Does anybody want to kick us off with um, a question or response to Jim or, Mal or Malvika? I was just switching. Sorry, I was switching to my phone. Did you say my name? I did, but don't worry. I was just asking if anybody had a question to a question oh, yes. or a response to kick us off in response to um your or Jim's talks. I there are a few questions, Danny. Um yeah. I wonder if Anne you can surface from line number eighty nine for Jim. And there are a few more questions that seems to have been responded to but worth repeating from the communication. And over to you. Totally. We did have a um, written question of really maybe asking for clarifications around um, like why the, why the move to Netlify? Um, is there a particular reason? There's some documentation um, that we'd have on GitHub, but is there kind of a too long, didn't read summary of the move? It's my personal vendetta. I hate Netlify. No. <laughs> Um, slightly more seriously, working with Netlify has been um, difficult. Um, there's been an in repo config file option, and an on the website uh, UI option, and it's been very difficult to decide what in the config file overwrites what on the UI and not all the and it was very confusing and it made responding to hey the book's not working kind of person like really really stressful and difficult the other recent thing as well is um we were trying to update the packages that we use to build the book and we need a new version of python and Netify don't support a newer version of python i think um, Jim, correct me if I'm wrong. I think they're stuck at like 3.8, which is, yeah, 3.8, which is no longer getting like support. Like the most com the, the most recent version of Python is 3.12. So it's a really old version of Python. Um, so from a technical standpoint, that's not good either. Um, so yeah, we're, we're just looking for alternative options to make maintenance um, easier. For, for the infrastructure working group. Thanks, Anna. Um, thanks, Jim. Also added that note to the pad. Um, one other question that came up was, how can someone who is not technical support the working group, the infrastructure working group? Yeah, that's, that's a really good question. I think specific suggestions um okay i'll say this and then and then i might criticize myself for saying it uh so suggestions for what subdomains you would like to see or, or would be helpful any sort of suggestions for services or um so services could be like a blog it could be a place to host recordings or videos um it could be uh, like Nextcloud file synchronization and storage. Um, and that's not a sort of promise that we can do all of this, but we'd, I think we're definitely interested in hearing what would be useful for people. Um, and, oh, and also specifically in the hosting, sort of what features are really essential and what actually is the best way to support serving the book in multiple languages. Um, that sort of 
information I think is sort of useful to help guide us in either sort of making decisions or informing people sort of having those conversations about what we choose and why. Um, so, re so I think those are sort of specific things. The reason I'm sort of hesitant is that sounds very much like people have to come to us. Um, I don't, yeah, I don't, maybe there's a better way to do that. Maybe we can be reaching out a, a bit more uh, or thinking about how we do that. Um, but yeah, definitely, I think maybe the sort of uh, summary of how to think about that is infrastructure is stuff that we sort of, uh, we either build or provide to help people, like it has a purpose. So we worry about how that's done in terms of software and hardware, but really what it's supposed to do is make people's lives better. So feeding back, this works for us, this doesn't work for us, or it'd be nice if it did this, or if we had this is, is really, really useful. I apologize in advance for the long, long list that you'll be receiving from all corners of the community, the billion things that, of course, we always want to do. Um, maybe in the interest of time, I'm looking through, and please, please, folks, um, adding some summaries of um, answers to questions, um, but I'm notoriously terrible at listening and taking notes without replicating your entire sentence or attempting to, so if there's any corrections that you can make there. Please, please do. I think uh, on that, uh, Malvika has had to shoot off to go and travel. And so if you have questions for Malvika, please do um, put in, in some extra detail in the notes. Um, with that, I think we should probably move on to our next our next feature. Um, Ali, are you ready to be talking? OK, and then I will start sharing the yes. screen again. Let's do it. Yeah, um, I, I'm i going to present now the Practitioners Hub, which is a project that both Malvika and I had been uh, uh, managing from, well, from last year, from January or February last year. And now we have some exciting, some exciting things to share. And of course, we want to get your help as well. If you don't know, the Practitioners Hub is a, it's a, it's an extension of the Turing Way, uh, where we want to systematic approach for cross-sector collaboration, products exchange, and skill building with organizations leading data science initiatives, including SMEs uh, from Bridge AI Network. Uh, we want to combine grassroots championing of best practices with system level adoption and cultural change. Um, next. Uh, this project is being funded by Innovate UK, Bridge AI, and the Alan Turing Institute. And Bridge AI uh, mission is to help businesses in high growth potential sectors, such as agriculture, food processing, construction, creative industries, and transport, to harness the power of AI and look their full potential. Um, the pro Bridge AI launched one year ago, and we already can see the impact that it has had in many uh, SMEs. Um, the project is very local, it's, it's based only in the UK, but we are working on expanding that. Hopefully we will have good news soon. Next, please. The way we worked is that we invited uh, organizations to appoint experts in residence, and we made a cohort of experts in residence that were, were collaborating with us for six months. And we designed a, some activities that were happening during these six months. Uh, we recognize their leadership for advocating best practices in their own sectors, in their own organizations. We had people coming from um, ONS, British Antarctic Survey, uh, Energy Systems Catapult. Um, oh, oh, I've been working with uh, Gigi Hall, which is also an SME, and, and, uh, and Genomics England. Uh, we provide them with professional skill building, opportunities and expert consultation, mentoring, uh, coaching sessions, and we co-created case studies together, providing open practices in their own sectors. Uh, we also had a lot of spaces for 
um, to connect and elevate their work. So here we you have a little graph to understand what we did in on a monthly basis. Some of them joined the collaborations cafe on a, on a very regular basis because we used those spaces to to meet. And now that the cohort is over, next please, Danny. Uh, we are planning our second cohort, which is going to be open till, sorry, from September. And we are inviting people, organizations to join, to, to, to register for the expression of interest. So we would like to have SMEs and organizations engaged in data science and AI to share their interest in joining the second cohort. Uh, we will focus on implementing best practices in data science and AI initiatives in their organization, in their own organizations. And we want them to, we want like a nice group to come together. So that's one of the asks. We have a new opportunity to join, join the second cohort. And the other one is that we are uh, accepting interest from individuals to join a network of advisors. Um, we will we would like to design the activities with this ne network of advisors, and they become the the coaches, the mentors, the facilitators of some of the topics that they are leading on. So when we when we were um, hosting many events during these six months, we found very interesting people that really have a lot of knowledge, and we want to work together with them to make sure that the the whole network of uh, uh, experts in residence and the network of advisors can uh, interact and collaborate. So we we, we make everything closer. In the deadline to apply is the on by the 30th of May. So if you know anyone that could be interested, not only from to be part of the cohort or to be part of the of the network of advisors, please uh, ask them to register. If you if they have any questions whatsoever, they can email me or they can email Malvika. We have a website. I'm going to put the link here, and uh, they will get a lot of information from there. And also, I think it's worth mentioning that if they go to our Sinoda account, can you next, Danny? They will be able to find the six case studies that we produced, and uh, I mean, reading these case studies will give them a sense, like of what they are going to be producing during the six months cohort. Um, so please help us uh, uh, raise the voice. No, help us recommend the opportunity. I can assure you it's a very fun space uh, and very interactive and very rich. Uh, finally, I just wanted to, next, Danny, to share a couple of activities that Bridge AI uh, is uh, organizing. Uh, they we're doing all the time trainings with them. Um, so next we will have a live training course operationalizing ethics in AI for the construction and the transfer sector sector. And we will have a, a big event in Manchester to celebrate the one year of the Innovate UK Bridge AI. And they're going to happen as well AI labs between June and July, where depending on the topics that we want to discuss, they, anyone would like to get better. They can go and and join this uh, sessions. Um, this is all for for the practitioners hub, but of course, uh, I'm more than happy to receive more questions. I'm happy. We I'm happy. I'm, I'm I have to say that uh, before this started, we were discussing how sometimes when English is not your your language, uh, it it doesn't wake up. So I feel like many times I feel like my English is not very good. So I apologize if I made mistakes or anything was wrong. Uh, I'm more than happy to 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 receive questions or feedback. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, Ali. Fantastic. Um, can I get the ball rolling with with a little question for you? Um so that we can better understand what type of people and organizations you're wanting to work with going forwards give us a little a little teaser of one of those case studies like what worked out really well last time mm, okay um, sorry to put you on the spot <laughs> no no no. i think it's a great question and i have a very good example but i don't know um one of the experts one of the appointed experts that we got uh, was so excited about all the open practices that we were discussing and all the sessions 
that he decided, they decided to open up their own company about open practices. So to us, this is a very, very good uh, response of the need to, to make this more open and more, uh, how do you like, the, to, to reach more people and to educate more people about open practices. Um, it's it's a very it's a very unusual example, but we are, we always laugh about it. Uh, but in other cases, I think like ONS, for example, they worked on they uh, for their case studies. They interviewed some many teams uh, where they wanted to capture the way that they uh, implement and open practices because they do have a very not only them but most of the experts in residence have a like a cultural problem where they're high level executive, they want to promote open practices and they're like the junior uh, staff, they do as well. But there is something in the middle where there is a cultural clash that comes from uh, like a risk, uh, not, not being able to control the risk, being afraid of anything of information or data becoming available. Uh, so there, Many times we were discussing on how to breach the cultural uh, issues that come from have being open. So that was probably one of the most interesting part to see how, I mean, which mitigations practices they took in order to 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 promote and to feel more more comfortable and more safe by having open practices. Uh, that's probably one of the ones that, that I mean a very good example in the ONS one. That you will get because you you will you will find that there are many di like different uh, concerns about uh, be having open practices. I hope that answered your question. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Thank you. Does anybody else have any questions for Ali on this? The practitioners have. If you think of things later, I'm sure you will, uh, Ali will appreciate being contacted. Um, Malvika says, everyone in the room is ideal person to join as advisors. We will also be keen to work with folks in contracted and paid capacity. We are exploring options for that. Please do sign up. Interesting. Okay. Good to know. Thank you. Um. The remaining things that we have scheduled on the call today are other info to share if there are things that people want to share with the group while we're here and open discussion using notes if there are other questions that folks want to bring from the notes into the discussion. Um, but we've covered most of the, uh, we've covered all of the presenty bits now. So is there anything uh, and is nudging me to pass to Winnie for uh, uh, discussing of the upcoming book dash. Winnie, are you there and happy to take the mic? Oh, thank you so much, Danny. Uh, good, this, this good evening here. I'm glad to be here. I just hope my network does not disappoint me because I've been on and off. I'm so glad uh, to be part of the community call today. Uh, we do have our book dash uh, from 3rd to 7th of June. And we do have a wonderful committee, which is doing great work behind. Uh, this committee uh, comprises of a number of, of diversity uh, group. Uh, we, do have, we do have Anne, uh, we do have Winnie, myself, uh, we do have Emma, uh, um, just a minute. Okay. Um, so. Okay, uh, we do have Denise and Shekha. 
uh, Emmanuel, Carlos, uh, Liz, Alexandra, Emma, and of course, Anne, who is who has been guiding us throughout um, the preparations. Uh, this committee is very crucial in supporting a diverse, productive, and engaging book dash uh, for everyone. And as I as I've earlier mentioned, uh, the book dash is scheduled for third to seventh of June, and um, the committee will be able to help in the organization of tasks, a reviewing of attendees applications, arranging a number of uh, social mm -hmm. sessions and uh, uh, onboarding participants, among other activities. We look forward uh, to mm -hmm. your participation. The call is still on. Uh, we remind you to apply by 26th of April. That's very near Friday, this Friday, uh, so that you're able to join uh, this one long week event collaboration and we meet with the different community members uh, from around the world. So I look forward to everyone's participation. Thank you, Dan, and have a great day. I appreciate it. Thank you, Winnie. Um, I'm increasingly tempted to, to join up for the uh, for the book dash myself, we shall uh, have to look at my calendar and see. <laughs> Alrighty. Um, does anybody else have anything that they want to share with the group? Upcoming events or things related to the Turing Wave that they think other folks might be excited about or they just want to um, be excited about? Um, yeah, I just want to mention that the Book Dash will have a hub in London. So to the ones that are in London, it's going to be fun to meet in person for lunch or maybe for dinner. Uh, it's always a space where where it's great to to have these hybrid, uh, I don't know, interactions with people. Uh, so if anyone hasn't considered joining, you don't have to attend the whole week or all the time. So you can just choose the time is that suit your time frame to your timetable better. Uh, but if you're in London, try to make it to, to the office and we can uh, um, spoil you. <laughs> very tempting, very tempting. Yes. And I, I think, just oh go ahead. Oh just linked a couple of um threads in the chat too. Um I know many folks uh, may be returning, but if it's your first uh time uh, applying for the book dash, uh linked in those threads and those materials are also videos to help with the application process, templates that you can copy. Um and if you have any any questions, uh please uh reach out to me by email. I'll add it in the chat and I can pass it on to the planning committee, um, can help you with any of the logistics and things like that too. Fantastic. Um we do have a few minutes left if anybody has additional questions that they want to pick up in relation to any of the things that we've talked about today. So this is, uh, yeah, a free-for-all moment. Um, Can we use part of the free floor to thank you for your wonderful chairing and the gentle energy that you brought to this community forum? That is very kind of you, Anne. <laughs> Maybe that's maybe that's a question. Um, I had saved this for if we had a couple of minutes at the end. What do folks think of this of this format? Uh, having it, I guess, a be open to anybody, and b having this structure of talks and then breakout rooms for discussion to allow questions to to coalesce. And any other comments as well? Welcome.
and there is a feedback section at the bottom of the, the pad as well, if anybody would prefer to answer um, non-verbally, textually, in a written form. Uh, Jim, you have your hand up. Go ahead. Yeah, I think definitely for me, I I like the breakout rooms. I like that divided into groups, you can sort of ask questions and focus the questions and sort of find the the most important ones. Um, I uh, I definitely prefer something like this to a sort of one sided delivery of information, uh, and especially having it open and inviting people to join and get involved, it, it wouldn't be sort of so much benefit if joining meant you sort of sit in a room and listen to people talk at you uh, for an hour or so. So I think that is to ask questions back and people who are presenting to be open to talking about things and, and having a sort of informal discussion about what they're doing is, is really nice. Yeah, I agree. My my hope is that with this sort of format, somebody that, for example, somebody that wanted to understand um, the ongoing decision making in the infrastructure group, for example, could actually come in with a fairly low level of understanding of the technical details and ask us directly, kind of, why? Why this? Why that? Yeah, okay. Oh. Okay. I unless anybody has anything else they would love to jump in with. I love finishing a meeting early. And so I might uh jump on that and say thank you to everybody for joining and see you next time. Okay. Hello.